Happy trails, everyone. Princess Bear here, and today we're at Fort Williams Campground because it's time to revisit In the Line. We are at the Trails and Reimagined. Just reopened as a sort of grab and go quick service, so we're gonna see what they have to offer us now. This place has some memories for us, so let's go see what they're gonna do. Be sure to ride a horse. No, don't ride horses. Don't ride animals. You heard the girl. has its own tapas menu now so you can order all your little apps like you would Sana Lounge or something and then like half of what Trails End used to be is now part of the bar so no more five stools trying to elbow your way in to sit inside in this whole area and they will serve you over here they will not serve you over at Trails End nor will they serve you any of the menu items here so if you're vegan and you want something other than a burger you gotta come to Crockett's Tavern, which I'm not mad at because um, they have the better drinks anyway. The Camper's Coop with, I'm, I think I'm saying it wrong, Layard's uh, Brandy. This is America's first spirit and it's also 100% vegan. This is really tasty. I'm scared that they're just gonna steal this away from me because this is like apple juice. It just tastes like apple juice. It's so freaking good. I'm gonna give it four and a half out of five apples. It's worth fighting for. Camper's coop. Now, is it, is it, you're in the camper's coop or the camper's are cooped up? Either way, you're gonna have a beverage being cooped up. Can't be really going wrong with that. It's like apple juice, not some magic word. Because apple juice is one of my many, many weaknesses. I don't know where it ranks, but it's in there. Ooh. Ooh. I hit a citrus over top of the apple. It's like a sweet and al alcoholic apple juice. She's right. If I didn't have my own beverage already, I probably would steal this. This is a 4.75 out of 5 pause. This may be my new practice time to drink. Previously, when I came here, I always got a smoked turkey. It's pretty close to being deep grown. If I can get this at the window, we're having a problem. No problem. Is this your original location for smoked turkey? Uh, yes. This is the very first place I had a smoked turkey on property. For those bourbon drinkers in the community, Crockett's Tavern now has seasonal old fashions. I like a rotation of drink. We like a rotation of basically anything. It was the reason to come back. But today is a Clementine old fashioned. I'm assuming it's Clementine in there. You got the bitters, the usual stuff. And then it's made with buffalo trace bourbon. Now, that's unconfirmed vegan, so none for the princess. More for me. Ooh, that nice citrus on top of everything. Citrus is the theme today, and I'm loving it. This is very, very smooth old fashioned. Probably having an old fashioned this smooth with the maple old fashioned from Topolino, but this, this is quite good. I give this 4.25 out of 5. with this beautiful plate of cauliflower. I was really excited for the cauliflower because I love Hoopty's cauliflower. It's like one of my favorite things on the vegan tray. So here we go with this beautiful aioli, which is nice because we didn't have aioli at Hoopty. I put a little bit too much aioli on that bite. But the cauliflower, it's not breaded. It's just lightly fried with the aioli. So it's not it's not terrible, but like, I just had some of the best cauliflower ever at the Minions Cafe at Universal. And this pales in comparison to that. This is a 2.75 out of five. It's above average, 
it's nice and fried and tasty. The aioli's okay, but it's just not like, I'm not gonna run to Fort Wilderness for this dish specifically. It's good if you're staying here though. Like I would much rather get this than a veggie burger. I love and give credit where credit to do. Anytime we come to a place that has a non all meat option for the princess ever. Uh, cauliflower fries. We've seen them a couple different places, but always interesting to see a new take on it. Now this is interesting because it's like multicolored cauliflower. It's not all white cauliflower, but it's got a nice color to it. It sort of reminds me of the cauliflower we get at White Pig. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you're right. I'm give it a little dip in the aioli. Mm -hmm. ah. It's very easy to get more than you plan in here. Very easy. It's odd how the aioli is very strong herb flavor, but also still very mayo -y. Like more mayo -y than I would normally like mayo. -y. Like I want a mixture that's just like mayo with stuff in it. Fancy mayo, if you will. I don't want to try one bite without the aioli. But all my stuff's over there. It looks the most, oh, yeah, that's fine. It looks the most spacious. I think it's just good in its own. If you're using the only, light dips. So maybe we did. Okay. Light dips, because you get a little goes a very long way. It is a good, like, tapas sharing portion, especially since you get all the best drinks here. I like it. It's better than I expected. I was expecting not great things, given our inconsistent history with uh, Charles Inn and Crocus Tavern as a whole, non-drink-wise. But I'm gonna give it three and a half out of five bucks. We have a nice spinning plate of food on a tray. We got no problem with food on trays. We get food on trays all the time at Plate Pig. But these were interesting because you can get fried chicken bites. I'm not usually a fried chicken bite type of person, but they have them. They get them in three different flavors. You can get a buffalo, you can get a blueberry barbecue, or you can get a the garlic parmesan. The blueberry barbecue sort of perked me up. It was giving me sort of like the blueberry barbecue that you get at Galaxy's Edge on their ribs there. So I was curious to how it would be on chicken. It's got a nice color to it. Very dark. We're gonna take a bite of that as is. It really reminds me of barbecue bites used to be all good at KFC back in the day. I'm getting KFC vibes, not in a bad way. But all the breading is well flavored and the, the blueberry barbecue sauce is like an extra like little kick. It's not like overly sweet. I was worried it was gonna be like a super sweet, like too intense sort of barbecue sauce, but it's nice and mellow and goes pretty well. Let's try to dip it in. I got ranch, but you can get blue cheese as well. Let's see how that tastes. It's like a lot of ranch. Mm. Mm -hmm. These are excellent. Well seasoned moist chicken, well sauce, not overly sauce. And these are ranch going with them. Yeah. Right, I'm giving those 3.75 out of 5 plus. Better than they deserve. Here we have fried green tomatoes with a house made remoulade and citrus greens. Now this is taking me back to Scat Cat's sliders, which I'm not mad at. I love them. We got a good amount, a healthy amount of ramelan, super small amount of citrus herbs, and then some, oh, sweet, ramelan in the middle. That's how you do it. Let's see how it tastes. That is really interesting tasting. It definitely reminds me of like a vegetable burger. It's something that I would expect to find at Port Orleans though. I wish there was more ramelan. I think it's missing that. But other than that, this is a really incredible burger. I do wish that they kind of did something a little similar to Scat Cats, where it was like a trio with like a jackfruit or something, because they have it. You can do like cauliflower, barbecue cauliflower, fried green tomato, and then jackfruit. That would be amazing. I really like this. I would definitely come here for this. Like this is a proactively, let's leave Magic Kingdom, take a boat, and come here thing. This is a four and a half out of five sliders. It's not as good as Scat Cats, so that's why it's not a five. It's not on the Princess Cities item, but it's or on the, not on the Princess Cities list, but it is very close.
The princess brings up a great point. Something we've always said about the Magic Kingdom area resorts, especially if you're plant-based in Magic Kingdom, your options aren't great. When I say aren't great, I mean they're pretty, pretty terrible. But if you're going to take a break from the park, both to get a drink and sort of just relax, get out of the crowd, sort of like decompress, coming to one resorts is a great option. There's is a direct boat ride from Magic Kingdom straight here. You can get a couple drinks, get you some tapas, go out and chill by the water, and then go back in the park and come with the fireworks. This is a good idea. I feel like it's so easy to ruin like fried green tomatoes if you overcook them, you become mushy and soft and you undercook them, you're not getting that sort of bite. These are like right in the middle, maybe a little bit over. So it's like soft and mushy, but you get that nice bread on the outside. The ramelot, I wish it was a dip, as well as being on the burger. It's there, you can taste it, but you need more of that flavor. Because the breading is not as well seasoned as I would have normally expected. And the ramelot has definitely helped. Sort of like busting some of that up. I would give this a four out of five pause. I think it's definitely worth the visit. Especially with a nice scenic boat ride from Magic Kingdom. This is easily worth coming for. Rest your feet, come get one of these. Now we have your typical Disney shoestring freak, but seasoned. So almost like we're at Mr. Kamal's at Animal Kingdom. It still doesn't pass the fry test. These fries are 50 50, like we always say. The seasoning is good. It definitely reminds me of Mr. Kamal's. Like, it's definitely the same seasoning, but the fries are typical Disney shoestring fries. They let you down. I really would have liked, like, a good steak fry or a wedge. A wedge would be fab. Or, like, those big pieces of potato that they give you at, like, Whispering Canyon. That would be amazing. But no, we have typical Disney shoestring fries, and they are typically like 50 50 on good. I and mean, that's basically what it says 50 50 on good, two and a half out of five fries is average. It doesn't get any extra points for being seasoned. As many times as these fries let us down, I'm always willing to give Disney shoestrings another try. They're such a mixed bag. Because, like, this one passes the fry test. I'm sure I'll pick up another one in here. They're just so inconsistently both in their cooking and in their seasoning. I'm going to get two of these here. But like seasoned fries, like when I say seasoned fries, I like to see the seasoning. I got to squint for these. Like I wear glasses, but my eyesight ain't that bad. It's like you took them out, you gave them like two shakes, and then served them. The seasoning is good. The fries are weak. But they normally are. Two and a half at five plus. So here you have a trio of sliders. What we thought would be best for the princess to have. Uh, similar to what you get at Scat Cat, is I have three different flavors of sliders here. So we have a pulled pork with some slaw on top. We have a fried chicken with a pickle and a little bit of barbecue sauce. And then we have a brisket with some pickled onions. I'm going to start over here with the pulled pork. A nice big chunk. I would say this is almost a slider plus. Because I'm not sliding this whole thing. I'm not gonna be like a baby bite. I'm not gonna lie. I expected the skimp on the pulled pork. And this would be some like amalgamous, boring pork. pork, but it's actually very flavorful and moist. The little sauce, the slaw. The mama slaw kind of is nice and crunchy. Have that nice bright taste to it. That is a very good fighter. Uh, I can give that one on its own. Four out of five claws. And for the fried chicken, I'm curious of the construction of this one, because it's like a little mini chicken bite. And like I have like almost little to no sauce in here. It's not as fried and not as breaded as like the chicken bites I had earlier. And then you have like this salad with a pickle on top. Maybe more interesting with spicy. But I'll, let's see what it tastes like. Mm. It's a soft piece of chicken. Juicy, well breaded, seasoned, moist. 
The uh, lettuce on top was really add a whole lot. There. There's a little bit of mayo in there. My barbecue sauce, like I thought. There's a huge pickle in there, which works. It's trying to come for like Popeye chicken sandwich, but it doesn't come anywhere close. Probably the weakest one so far. But I'd say it's about average. I give it two and a half out of five. Points. Last up, we have the brisket. Overflowing off the bun on both sides. It looks like a mustard based barbecue sauce on it. You should pick some onions in there. This is the big boy. I feel like this is like the king on the side of the way it just flops off the edge there. We're gonna take this whole side just bite into it. It's definitely giving me like a Carolina mustard based barbecue sort of style, which I love. One of my favorite style of barbecue sauce. The brisket is well cooked. It's a nice piece, not like super fatty or anything like that. Got a nice bite to it. I would say that's a four out of five plus. I really think that the pulled pork is the best one. But it's a solid trio. Overall, I'm giving the whole plate four out of five plus. It's a worthy dinner. Boy dinner. One of those coveted thick paper straws. This was the only paper straw you really want when you can't get agave or bring your own straw. And this is like the one thing I love about coming to Fort Wilderness or Wilderness Lodge. Mason jar cups. If you ever get to stay in a cabin, these are in your cabin and they make great wine glasses. Yay, we saw wildlife. I mean, we saw the little lizards too. That's a great Oh, that's one. good. It's got a nice and mint to it that I wasn't yeah, expecting. This is a tasty mule. I would even call it mulicious. Four and a half out of five. Minutes. Our princess, the queen of dad jokes, would we really have it any other way? We would not. I can confirm. Cheers to the community. Mm. The mint is a surprise. It gets, it's there and it's strong, but I wouldn't call it overpowering. It goes well with the blackberry. <laughs> Uncle Nearest, yeah. And some gin in there too. Or ginger? Or ginger? Yes, ginger ale. Yeah. Ginger ginger beer. It's a very nice mix. Very calming. It almost feels like a, a tea. Or alcohol, obviously. Four to five minutes. Got another one of those lovely zero proof cocktails that we are we're about now. Um this one is a pink London spirit. I, I don't know what type of alcohol we're trying to imitate in this one. But it's with grapefruit and tea and lime. So um, maybe like a gin. Let's see. Oh, that's really good. That tastes like a sweet tart, like the good flavor of the sweet tarts. I really like that. I would steal this from Bear if he let me, but I know he won't. So I'm gonna give it a four out of five mocktails. This is, this is a tasty one. So we have the pink London Spritzer. Uh, like you said, we're trying to bring more mocktails to the community. Don't like alcohol or just never really been interested in it. Mocktails, some new socially. It's a pretty tall drink. I'll give it that. This reminded me a lot, inscription wise, of something we got at the Meridian and Sister Cross the website. So I figured that I'd try this and see how we how it goes. Yeah. Ooh. That is refreshing. It's a nice, like, it's like a breeze. It's a drink. But with a bit more carbonation to it, it's from the grapefruit soda. I like that. If you told me there's alcohol in there, I believe you. I like it. Four and a half and five pots. Solid. This Trail Zen slash Crockett Tavern reimagining is interesting to say the least. It's very much a reminiscent of its old self, but totally different. Like even here where we're standing, there's no more rocking chairs. There's no more tables. Everything is topsy-turvy, but also like- A lot of the same. The same. 
I will say that the biggest improvement comes in the form of Crockett's Tavern. I think it's I the way that it operates now with like the having limited sort of tapas menu and then sort of having more inside seating they had before works really well for Crockett's Tavern. Source trails in, that feels sort of tacked together and sort of like confusing. Like a lot of people not yeah. really understanding how it works because like you can walk up to the counter and grab things, but you have to order your food at the register. There's some kinks to work out. But I think overall, it's still okay. There is a little bit of confusion. Like the Crockett's Tavern area that we were sitting is the lounge area. So if you order food from Trails End, you're not really supposed to sit over there nope. unless you're ordering food there. They're trying to enforce that, but there were a lot of people there that just kind of didn't care and just followed their own rules. And some of them got admonished and some of them cast member was okay with it so you just got to take that as it is don't do it just let just go sit outside or in trails and don't take up somebody's lounge spot just because you can't find a spot readily available now there are still plenty of benches outside here like in the grassy knoll areas and like then across where like the parking is permanent bench areas yes. now not and like makeshift ones the walk-up window for crockett's tavern is still for here to order all the drinks so the spirit of Crockett's Tavern and Trails Inn is still very much alive here at um, the Wilderness Camp. Yeah, it's just, so basically what it is, Trails End is like P and J's Southern Takeout, right? And then Crockett's Tavern is like expanded into a lounge. So basically we have the quick service the way it needed to be and the bar the way it needed to be, but we took away the buffet. We still have Hoopty, but we need one more restaurant at Fort Wilderness. We need a table service restaurant here something we want to know what you guys think of this reimagining do you think this is a step down sort of stay where it is step up and do you miss having a table service here at the forwardness campground let us know in the comments below if there's anything else you can see us do here of course that's always a good place to find us hit that notification bell you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week monday tuesday wednesday thursday saturday and we will see you soon be sure to subscribe Otherwise, Bear might yeet himself into a golf cart and then somebody's going to drive off on that golf cart. We're never going to see the man again. I have done that before, but you heard the girl. Mm -hmm.